Okay, <clears throat> we're back. We just got done creating layer overrides, graphic layer overrides, that apply only to the viewport in Sheet A101. Now, one of the things I'm going to do now is going to seem a little strange, but I want to get rid, I want to delete from this file a lot of information that is not going to be used in this file. And uh, the number one thing I want to get rid of is going to be layers. So I will start the layer command, assuming it will let me. There we go. So I want to set my layers to existing to remain. <clears throat> I want to expand out the, uh, the name list a little so I can see what's going on. Okay. There's no existing millwork in this file. There's no existing specialties, no existing stairs. There are no partial height walls that are existing, no existing electrical, no existing mechanical or structural. Now we're using the column grids, but we're not, we don't have any existing columns per se, so I'm going to highlight those. All I'm going to do is, pre is uh, press delete, or I could right click. And I can say delete layer. There's nothing on these layers. So instead of having a, a layer list that's just huge and massive, now remember, all this information still exists in our template. If I need to get it back, I can. I'm going to do the same thing for my new construction layers. <clears throat> there are things that are going to be in here I don't need. For example, uh, there's no, there are no new handrails. Uh, my floor layer, I actually I'm not going to use that in this file so I can delete that there are no stairs I have no windows uh, no new windows at any rate some of you might it just depends on what you do I'm gonna leave this header layer because that will be used in the future and I did the same with existing I don't have any partial height walls that I'm using that are new my new electrical information doesn't belong in A101, it actually belongs in A102, so I can delete these layers from A10, A101. Same thing with my column grids. I don't have any new column grids and I don't have any new columns in these files. So I can select them and I could either right click and say delete or I can just push delete on the keyboard and they'll all be deleted. So this is a very, very quick way to cut down on the length of that list of layers. We don't know exactly what we're doing, everything with the uh, the general stuff yet. And truthfully, all this information, the information in your general layers, um, a lot of this is not going to be used until we start discussing dimensions and annotations and things like that in a future assignment. So don't delete anything out of there and don't delete anything out of details yet. But now when I look at all non-XREF layers, the list of layers that I have to deal with just got a lot smaller. So it's going to be easier for me to navigate this list when there aren't as many layers as I actually have to deal with. All right, that's it. I'm done with that. I'm going to save this drawing. So that's my A101. I'm going to come over to A102. Now, I already had this open. And I'm getting the message saying, hey, you know, I just you just made a change to this. Do you want to see this change? So I'm going to reload the drawing. Now the only thing that I did for the change in that drawing was to actually delete layers. A deleted layer in a referenced file won't show up until you close out and reopen. So and you don't have to shut down the computer, you don't have to shut down AutoCAD, it's just in order to see these changes that I made to the layers in A101, to see that change in A102, I have to close A102 and reopen A102. You guys have seen kind of how painful this is for me to work in this file. Uh, it's the only reason why I'm not closing and reopening things. Um, it's running in a virtual machine. It's just it, it's got its problems. It, certainly on this uh, th this computer isn't made for this kind of workload. Not long term anyway. I'm going to click on model. <clears throat> now 
Now I'm going to do a couple of things, um, a couple of different things here. Remember how we changed the color of the uh, uh, um, of the floor plan? Well, those those changes. Remember those color changes only applied to the viewport in A101. We need to do something similar here. We're just going to do it in a different way. So back to our layer dialog. I want to see all my XREF layers in A101. <clears throat> You can see I even have some uh, information here that's uh, that's hidden, or that's uh, that's locked. Now you'll notice the name of the file is A101, and you'll notice the layer name has an A101 in front of it. That's how you can tell that whether um, the, the the A furniture layer is the furniture layer in the current file or the furniture layer in a reference file. So I want to do I want every single one of my existing layers. Details, 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 details. I want all the existing layers. Here we go. Existing, 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 existing. I don't need them locked because they're in another file. And because I'm in model space, I don't have the ability to change it in a viewport override. But what I can do is I can just change the color of it here. So I'll click on a color swatch. Come back to true color. One six eight comma one six eight comma one six eight. Click OK. Now, if you look over to the immediately to the right over here, you'll see those items are turning gray. Now, I'm going to make one more change. Now, remember, this is a layer that's going to show things on my ceiling. I don't want to. I, I, I don't want to see these uh, overhead lines being shown as hidden. I need to show them solid. So with just these two overhead lines selected, I'm going to change their line type. By changing this line type will allow me to show those lines as being solid. And give it a moment, let it do its thing. There it is. And you can see it over here on the right. The one other change that I want, the other change I want to make to these layers. Pull that back up. I want to make one more change. I don't want, well. I might want to see my furniture here because it's going to help me place my light fixtures. I don't want to see my furniture in the paper space layout. So I click on the paper space layout, I go into the viewport, come back to my layer dialog, there we go. Here's my furniture layer. I want to freeze my furniture layer only in this viewport. I don't want to rename it, it. Apparently, I clicked on it one too many times in my haste. A furniture new, and I want to freeze it only in this current layer. Fine, be that way. We'll just do it a different way. It's giving me grief, and I'm not entirely certain why. I'm just going to come up here. Hopefully, it will allow me to do this here. There it is. A101, A Furniture New. Freeze it in the current viewport. There we go. And I was not inside the viewport when that happened. Double click the viewport. Furniture. Freeze it. There we go. Now it's gone. Now that's doing what I wanted to do. But there's one th other thing, like you see, I double click to, to exit my viewport. There's one other thing that's going on. This may not be the case for your design, but it is certainly the case for my design. Is that I have areas that where the ceiling height is going to differ from room to room and from area to area. And I'm going to go back to my sheet A101. I'm going to click on my model space because I need to see this information. And I'm going to isolate 
my new light my uh, new ceiling change layers and my existing ceiling change layers now what's happening what what I have chosen for my design is there are going to be multiple ceiling layers that are that are going on here I actually need to turn my uh, my new wall layer on to make this work a wall E a wall N turn it on right because there's a few other places that I have to trim here so all of this area through here is going to be completely covered with jipboard. So I don't want to see any existing ceiling change lines happening through here. So I'm going to use my trim command, not text. I want to, I want to trim that out. And actually this area through here is also going to be a drop down ceiling. So I want to trim these lines back. go. I can erase him. I'll duplicate the other side here. And this time I'm going to select my cutting objects and trim all that out. And my wall placement is in a slightly different position on another on my uh, the other floor plan, but in the master bedroom, this area here, this this area here is exposed to the, the existing structure above. Same with this part of the living area; it's exposed to the structure to the structure above. So that's what I'm indicating is I need to show this coming across. So I want to trim that back, and I want to. Trim that back. Well, this is where things are going to get a little tricky. Inside this utility closet is exposed to the structure above, but I need, still need to see those ceiling change lines. Um, I'm use the break command. I'm going to have to manually tune this. No, use a line. Go from here to here. There we go. Trim all. I need to trim this and this. I'm going to zoom in because I'm going to trim this. But because this line is embedded within a wall. Theoretically, I should probably I should move that rear wall a little bit, but it's not going to kill me. So I'm going to I'm going to delete, delete that line. And the washer dryer is going to have a closed ceiling, and this uh, entry foyer is also going to have a closed ceiling. So I need to trim these trim these back as well. There it is. And that's only a temporary line, so I'm going to delete him. So I'm hoping this is going to make a little sense now. We went through that exercise of showing it. If you do not have any existing ceiling shown, then this part of the exercise that we went through may not apply to you. Uh, I'm going to unisolate my layers, bring everything back. But as you can see, I have existing ceiling shown and new ceiling shown. I've got different ceiling heights being being uh, revealed and everything here and I, I, I want to have these distinctions as a part of my design so I need to show that information. So I'm done with these changes. Go back to my floor pen layout tab. I'm going to save my current drawing and go back to sheet 102 where AutoCAD should theoretically tell me hey a reference file just changed Okay, it's not giving me, oh, there it is. There it is. And reload the changes. <clears throat> and now you can see that my floor plan has actually changed. So the next thing that we've got to do is we've got to start laying out lights and we've got everything else done. Um, 
but that's the next video because these videos uh, I don't want to uh, the videos to get too long so saving my stuff and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video